Um, things went downhill very, very quickly for Kimberly. She was septic. She was in multi-organ failure. Uh, she was losing blood flow to her limbs. Um, Patty, this question is for you. Could you share your personal experience with meningitis and the vaccine? In 2012, my daughter Kimberly was a healthy high school senior in her last two weeks of school, looking forward to the next week where she would go to her prom and she would have her high school graduation and then begin her nursing education. Kimberly's dream was to be a pediatric nurse. She came home from school one afternoon and complained that she had body aches and a low-grade fever. So I gave her some ibuprofen and she was absolutely fine after that throughout the rest of the night. However, when we woke up the next morning, Kimberly was very sick. It was drastically different. She said, mommy, everything's hurting me from the top of my head to the bottom of my toes. Even my eyelashes hurt. Yeah. And then she said, she couldn't lift her head off the pillow. She was really, really sick. And she said, you know, mom, I feel like my ankles are bleeding. So I pulled back the sheets and I saw that she had tiny purple dots on her ankles. And as a nurse, I knew this was very significant. And I rushed her to the emergency room. Once we got to the emergency room, the doctors pulled me aside and they said, we suspect your daughter has bacterial meningitis and that the bacteria has actually infected her blood. My reaction was, there's no way my daughter could have bacterial meningitis. She's been vaccinated. I know for a fact that she received the men ACWI vaccine at 11 and a booster dose at 16. The doctor then went on to tell me that although Kimberly had been vaccinated with the men ACWI vaccine, she was left unprotected against another serogroup of bacterial meningitis called serogroup B. At that time, we did not have a vaccine in the United States licensed to protect against meningitis B. So at that point, I had done everything that I could have done for my daughter. Of course. She was as protected as she could have been at that time. Um, things went downhill very, very quickly for Kimberly. She was septic. She was in multi-organ failure. Uh, she was losing blood flow to her limbs. Her limbs had turned black. They told me that if she survives this, she will likely be a quadruple amputee. And shortly thereafter, it was also determined that she was losing blood flow to her brain and that I had to make the most horrific decision of my life. And that was to remove my otherwise healthy, beautiful 17-year-old from life support. I buried Kimberly in the prom dress that she had hanging on her closet door. It's all ready to be all ready to be danced in. Her shoes are right there. She was a 17-year-old who was full of life, and she had so much more life to live, and she was like any other healthy high school senior. Oh, Patty, that is a, an excruciating story, and I am so sorry for everything that you have gone through, and I have profound gratitude that you're here to talk to us and parents like me who um, want to protect their child and who think that they are already doing everything that they can and to learn more about how we can protect our kids against meningitis. And I, again, um, I know as a mother and as a nurse myself, I, I, I can, I can't even begin to imagine um, how you, how you've been coping and how you were able to get through that situation. 